2019 was a huge year for smartphones and there were a lot of big innovations from 2018 into 2019, giving us a huge variety of phones that are all really, really impressive for many different companies. But which one's actually the best phone you can buy? Now in this video, I wanna break down the best phone for several different categories, including the best overall camera for photos or for videos, the best high function budget phone. So if you're trying to spend from like 300 to $500, but you want a phone similar to a flagship phone, maybe what's the best phone you can buy there. Then category three is the best, most powerful and overall productive phone, which basically is going to be anybody who is working in a you know professional environment. So a business, or if you're starting a business or you're presenting things a lot, or maybe if you're just looking for a powerful phone for gaming, what's the best option you have? Category four is the most innovative and progressive phone. We saw a lot of this this year, but which one's actually the biggest stride in the right direction? The next category is the best overall all around phone. Somebody just gives you infinite money and says, buy me a great phone. I just wanna make my life better. I don't care you know, how much you spend on this. What is the best option you have there? And then lastly, the best value flagship phone. Now, that essentially means you're looking for the full high-end processor, high-end cameras, but you wanna spend a little bit less money. What options do you have? So category one is the best overall camera on a phone. And for me, I'm gonna say this is the Pixel 4 and I'll explain why. Now first, starting with a limitation, this doesn't have an ultra wide angle lens, which I know some people really like. And so I'll list a runner up for this category that does have that ultra wide angle lens. But first focusing on why this is the best photo camera of 2019, I think there's a couple reasons here. So the first one, it has a really good white balance, which means your colors look really true. Now, if you take a picture in like any environment really, from my experience, after using this phone for an entire month, it finds anything that's white, has an adaptive white balance there and looks really good in the picture. So anything that's white actually looks really white, which is better than even some of the most expensive DSLRs or real you know, expensive cameras struggle to do that. Now this also has a really good high dynamic range or HDR, which means it takes you know, anywhere from like three to 16 photos and layers them together to really give you the best photo possible, taking things from really dark spaces and making them a little brighter, taking things in really bright spots that are washed out and making them a little darker so that you have any, anywhere you look, you can see everything in the picture and it's really well balanced. So you have really good colors, really good whites, really good you know, white balance there, uh, really good brightness balance. And of course you also have astrophotography, which makes it an, really an amazing phone all around for taking pictures. And all of this does it automatically. So you don't have to change many settings. You just take a picture and it pretty much just works. Now, if you're looking to change a little bit more settings, maybe like the Galaxy series that has a pro mode might be a good one for you. But I think the best runner up here, so best photo phone, first of all, is the Pixel 4. But the best runner up, in my opinion, is the Huawei P30 Pro, which has a really impressive camera and does have that third camera on there, which might be good for you if you really want the ultra wide angle. But talking about the best video camera then overall, I think this is the iPhone 11 Pro, again, for a couple reasons. This one obviously has a really powerful processor and does have that third lens on there. So they have the telephoto, the wide angle and the ultra wide angle, which is really nice for uh, especially taking videos because the ultra wide angle makes it look a little bit more smooth when you're taking videos. And the reason I chose the iPhone 11 over the other, other you know, a lot of phones have three lenses, that I chose the iPhone 11 because of the color. I think they do a really good job of capturing color, making it look really good, uh, pretty cinematic. And I think the videos from an iPhone, my personal preference, I think they look better than other phones from 2019. Next category is the best high function budget phone, which essentially is any phone from maybe 300 to $500. And there are a lot of phones in this range, but I think the no brainer choice for this one is the Pixel 3a. Now I bought mine for I think $300, but usually it's $400 if you don't have a sale. They have sales all the time though, so you can get this cheaper. And when you do get this phone, it is really impressive because what Google did is rather than just iterating on the flagship phones, they took one step back halfway through 2019 and they released this phone, which has essentially what Google's really good at into, you know, baked down, boiled down into something that's a little bit cheaper. So the reason it's cheaper is not because it has cheaper software. It still uses the same Google Assistant, the same, you know, pure Android on board and everything like that, but it's just cheaper because the hardware is a little cheaper. So you have like the polycarbonate case right there. Uh, you only have one lens on there instead of three, but it is a really good camera. You're using the Pixel 3 camera on here, which is probably the best from 2018 on this phone. And again, it's so cheap. 
So having this phone that has the assistant, has a good camera, is really cheap, still has all the software, and is running a pure Android, which means it'll be fast for a pretty long time. It really shouldn't slow down. Hey guys, a quick aside, if you're new here and haven't subscribed yet, but you're interested in this video or new videos like the Microsoft Surface Duo and Neo, the iPhone SE 2, or the Galaxy S11, make sure you go down and subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss those videos. But that brings us to the next category, the overall most powerful and productive phone of 2019 in my opinion, is the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, and I'll explain why here. There are several different reasons. First of all, if you're trying to be productive uh, and you're in some kind of work environment, you think about what exactly would you be doing? So one, you might be taking notes at random times. You don't know when you have to write down someone's phone number, you have to doodle something, some things that you can't just type right away, and it can be hard to do that with a standard phone that doesn't have an S Pen. So having that little pen on there that you just take it out, don't even have to sign in, and just scribble whatever you want on the phone, makes it pretty quick when you're trying to do quick business meetings or take notes from a presentation. And when you're starting a business, that seems like a really good option there. Speaking of presentations, this phone's also great if you are giving presentations because you can use the S Pen as actually like a little remote or like a clicker to go to the next slide. And it's such a tiny little pen, it could be in your pocket, it connects to your phone, you can present from your phone, just connect it into a projector. And also when you connect it into a monitor or anything else, you have the Samsung DeX interface, which is basically like having a desktop on your phone. And this is no joke because it actually works similar to a desktop in a lot of ways because this is phone, this phone's really powerful. This phone has a lot of RAM and the lowest storage you can even get on it is like 256 gigabytes, which is insane. That's more than a lot of laptops even have. So I think it's a no brainer. This phone is extremely powerful, has a really big, really nice display. Uh, and overall, it's just a really productive phone for people that are trying to get a lot done. And again, if you're trying to do any kind of gaming, it's a really powerful phone for that as well and they have some advanced cooling technology inside, so it really shouldn't ever get hot. The next category, the most innovative and progressive phone. Now we saw a lot this year with folding phones, and this can be a little bit of a blurry line, which, you know, obviously they were all kind of working on these phones at the same time. The first one to really come to market with a really impressive design was the Samsung Galaxy Fold, and I think I have to give them the trophy here. Even though it's not the best phone, it's still working out some kinks, but the most innovative, I think they're really moving in the right direction, where they're taking you know, the concept of a phone, the concept of a laptop, and Samsung is kind of merging them into like, yes, it's more expensive, but you don't have two devices that are both expensive. So you still have like Samsung DeX, which Samsung's really focusing on, but you also have like this phone that folds into a tablet and is really innovative to have a screen that folds. It's kind of the first of its kind. And yes, we saw like the Motorola Razr, which maybe is a better way to fold. It maybe it looks a little bit more like a phone when you hold it then, um, but I'm not arguing over what the best overall folding phone is, I'm arguing what the most innovative phone is. And I think a lot of engineering work really went into the Galaxy Fold, especially the second time around uh, when it was released. The next category then is the best overall power phone, which essentially what I mean by that is like the best phone overall of 2019. Uh, and this one I think is the iPhone 11 Pro or the iPhone 11 Pro Max, depending on the size you want. And before anyone says, oh, this guy's just an iPhone sheep, like just take note, this right here, my everyday phone that I normally use, is a Galaxy S10. That's the phone I use, but I'm still saying the best all around phone of 2019. If somebody just says, get me a great phone, here's a lot of money, just make my life better, I don't care. The iPhone 11 is gonna be really good. And the reason I say this, I didn't explain this yet, but the reason is because of the A13 chip, in my opinion, which is a significant improvement over the A12 chip with respect to speed and battery usage, especially, uh, and it's also, in my opinion, a better chip than a lot of other, like the Snapdragon 855. I think the A13, I think, is better, uh, in my opinion. Now, the Apple also has, of course, three cameras on there, a really good camera, like I said, the best video camera, in my opinion, uh, and obviously a really good integration with their system. So with the AirPods, with the watch, with a, a lot of other stuff out there, the Apple ecosystem is really hard to argue with, and I think they did a really good job with the iPhone 11 Pro here. So two more categories to talk about. One is my personal favorite, the phone that I've been using whenever I'm not testing a new phone. And so for some reason, I always keep coming back to the Samsung Galaxy S10 regular. I have it right here. I say regular because it's not the plus, it's not the E, it's the one in the middle. And there's a couple things I really like about this phone. So first of all, it has a decent amount of storage. 128 gigabytes means I pretty much never fill it up, even though I'm taking 4K videos all the time with one of the three cameras on the back. Now the three cameras on the back, it's a telephoto and ultra wide and uh, of just regular standard wide angle lens. And also has a heart rate sensor on the back. I probably don't use the heart rate very much, 
But it, I do like the integration that Samsung has with their, their kind of their ecosystem where they have the Galaxy Buds, they've got their Galaxy Watch Active 2, uh, and they've got a lot of other stuff that just works really well with this Samsung device. I also like the screen, it's really bright. You can see in pretty much any daylight. It's only 60 hertz refresh, but the colors are really good. And like I said, it is a 4K really bright screen. It also has the in, screen fingerprint sensor as most new Samsung devices do have. And it does have a really small little selfie camera up in the corner. Some people like it in the middle. I think I got used to it in the corner. It also has Samsung Dex. So if I'm traveling, I plug into a hotel TV and I just use my phone as that. But I do recommend if you are going to use that, guys, get a VPN. The one I use is NordVPN. I'll link it down below. It's usually like 75% off if you want that. Um, but I always do that when I'm traveling. And then of course, the last reason I really like this is the Bixby key which is programmable, meaning that you can set it so that if you press it once, it'll open Snapchat or Instagram or whatever you want. For me, I'd open Snapchat because you never know when like someone's gonna do something really stupid and you wanna catch it on video for Snapchat. So the Bixby key makes that really easy. You sign in, hit the Bixby key, opens up Snapchat and you're ready to go. So that's why I think this is my favorite overall just everyday phone that I like personally. But getting into the last category, the best value flagship phone, I think is the OnePlus 7T. This phone has really impressive specs and for some reason is much cheaper than you would expect. So depending on where you look, it's somewhere around like $700-ish but it has Snapdragon 855 Plus. Uh, it has a fingerprint sensor under the screen. It has a 90 Hertz refresh rate on the screen. It has 128 gigabytes and eight gigabytes of RAM. And then it also has a 6.55 inch screen. So just an all around really impressive phone for a relatively low price considering the, you know, the specs on that phone. So those are all really good phones, but is it worth it for you to wait until 2020 to get a phone? There's a lot of phones I'm really excited about for 2020. One of them, of course, is the Galaxy Fold 2. So I probably wouldn't even buy the Galaxy Fold 1. If they come out with the Galaxy Fold 2, which I think they will, I expect that would be a, a big step in the right direction, a huge second iteration from the first one. Now, speaking of folding phones, I think some other really exciting phones or phones, whatever they are, the Surface Duo, the Surface Neo are kind of like tablet, phone, laptop things. And I think those are gonna be really exciting where Microsoft is jumping back into the mobile game now with you know having earbuds, of course, they're coming out with those and coming out with kind of a phone laptop type thing. Uh, I think it's gonna be really exciting to see what that offers and what that actually is like to use. Then lastly, the Galaxy S11 is really like the next big flagship that should probably come out in expected like mid to late February. And that's gonna have allegedly five cameras on there, some really impressive specs on there. And so I'm really excited to see what that phone looks like. If you're considering waiting until 2020, that's probably the big phone to wait for. The rest probably won't be until probably sometime in October. So those are the phones that I'm excited about. These are also the phones that I think are the best phones from 2019. So comment down below which one you like best if you like any of these or a different one I didn't mention. I wanna hear it. I know some people are a little protective of their phones and a little defensive and they try to argue a lot, but try to keep the comments friendly, guys. I wanna hear which one you like best and why. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.